a group of my uh, friends are doing a survey and we wanted to know how does 9-11 have an effect on us? What do you think of the economy? Now stay away from the politics because it'll be, <laughs> okay? But any questions like that? What do you think of the fire? We just had a fire last week. Were you scared? Just like that. Ask those questions. Remember, it's not about you talking. That's the fourth one. It's about you connecting, asking a question, and listening. Okay? So number one, you're not a salesperson. You're not selling Jesus. Number two, you're waiting, praying for a sign. Okay? Meaning, because the Spirit is drawing them. And yes, there's nothing there. You walk on. That's it. So the task is not about closing the deal, number, th number three, but making the initiation, asking the question, and then listen. That's. And then the spiritual transition. So after they talk for a while, they might get into their health, they might get into their finance, and by the way, they forgot that, why are you talking to me? <laughs> And then you say, have you considered that God is doing this so that he's trying to say something to us? Do you believe in God? That's it. That's a spiritual trans transition. So I see it like this. Base one, you see baseball? Base one, you greet, you smile, and you try to make the connection. So you get past base one, base two, you start asking those questions, general, open-ended question to listen. And then base three is when you make the spiritual transition of that conversation, okay? And we'll practice and we'll give you a, a few ideas of how you make the transition. And then you take turn in a group of three, when you're going a group of three, one person quiet and pray, Okay, and keep your eyes open. Pray with your eyes open, okay? Because sometimes uh, it could be unsafe out there. So, <laughs> so you don't pray with your eyes closed. So one person, just be there as the, the, the other person would strike the conversation, okay? And then you take turn. You say, okay, Nathan, now your turn. Uh, make the connection. So then he'll walk around in a group of three and look for somebody to strike a conversation. Okay, and then the other person who's praying would, would pray that God will open the doors, that we will strike the conversation and make the connection. And the second person, get ready. You know why the second person is very important? Because Nathan might just freeze. <laughs> okay, so the second, the second person will say, oh, did you hear, hear about the fire last week? Okay, and then Nathan, oh, 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 and uh, by the way, Nathan have a few questions for you, okay? That's what the person, the second person does, is a rescuer, you know, kind of like, you know. But so you know, base one, you, you try to strike a conversation, ask us permission, base two, you're asking a question to listen, base three, you transition the conversation to spiritual meaningful, okay? Now, Christian, come up and share. Okay. So, how are y'all doing today, by the way? Yeah. Good, really? It's kind of early, isn't it? Not really. All right, um, all right, so when we talk about talking with somebody about Jesus, right? Um, like Young said, it's not about convincing them, okay? I love to argue with people. I, I like to disagree with people. Uh, I used to commute in college, and we'd have this house, and we'd sit, and we'd just argue about everything because we were smart people, and that's what we'd like to do. You know, I had friends who were philosophy majors. One was an evolutionary biologist, and the other guy was a druid. Like a real druid, okay? Okay. And it's not about convincing people. You're never going to convince anybody of anything. People's natural instinct, the moment you say, hey, maybe you're wrong, they're like, no, I'm not. Like if I told you, hey, Stacy, are you sure you're a boy? <laughs> and Stacy would automatically be what? That's what people are like. You know, you want to confront somebody with something that maybe they disagree with. So what you want to do 
is you want to say that, hey, we're the same person, okay? Now, witnessing to someone, especially in this day and age, is more about letting them know that Christians are legit, okay? Because the fact is, anybody who reads the Bible says, man, this is a pretty good thing, right? Even Mahatma Gandhi, who's a famous Hindi, a Hindu, right? He said, if Christians acted like Jesus, I'd be a Christian, right? Today, the problem is most people think Christians are jerks or um, douches, you know, like, I mean, that's really the best way to describe it, that we're out to get the world, that we hate you if you're gay, if you're not white, you know, we hate you, um, if you sin, we hate you, if, if you have long hair, we hate you, if you have short hair, it's too short, you know, people think that Christians are out to get them, you know, especially if you're like a Muslim or something, they get, they get nervous, so what you want to do is you want to talk to them and find common ground. That's really what it's about. They, they need to know that you're a person, that you're just a guy, that you're just a girl, that you don't think you're better than everyone else. Because trust me, I mean, if you read the Bible, you know you're not, you know. You need to, you need to let people know that, hey, we're just people. Because um, that's what makes Christianity attractive. That's why people become Christians, because they see people who love God, and they're like, man, they're different. You need to break the, the, the caricature. You know, have you ever, seen, ever been to the uh, amusement park and they have those like cartoon drawings of people and it looks nothing like you at all? Your lips are too big, your, your head is gymungous and your body is the size of like a pea or something. Your body's tiny and your head's like... People have this mind that if you're a Christian, you're that guy. I mean, that you walk around with the, that, that in the back trunk of your car, you have a sign that says God hates, you know, whatever. Don't, maybe a blank spot so you can put it in. You know, and they, ha- they think you have one in the back of your car and you're going to walk up to their house and start picketing them. And you need to remind them, no, we don't really do that. You know, we're, most of us are not old men in suits. You know. Okay, all right, so a couple keys, right? When you're talking to someone and you want to convince them that Jesus is an option, because really what you want them to think is that Jesus is an answer and that you need an answer. Most people will actually agree with you on those two things. So you start, the first place you want to start is the world, okay? The world is messed up, okay? The big word for it in Christianity is called depravity. But I'll just say, you want to convince someone or say, hey, I mean, the world's not, the world's not a good place, right? Almost everyone will agree with you on that. Very few people will say, oh, the world's great. You know, and then you can say, well, what about Hitler? And they'll be like, well, it's gotten better since then. <laughs> You know, but, and you don't have to be mean about it, because I mean, this, the, the point is most people agree the world is a messed up place, right? It's where you want to start. And then, you know, you both agree the world's a messed up place, and you ask, all right, what is the answer to that? What is the answer to the, to, to the problems of our world? You know, is it hope, change, hope you change your stuff? Is it, you know, I mean, is it politicians? Is it money? You know, people will talk about those things. Every, everybody at the center, because of who God made us. We know the world's messed up. We know the world's broken. We all, and everybody's got their own solution. You know, some people say that you want to work hard. Some people say, hey, I'm going to be a good guy. You know, everybody else has got it. I'll be, I'll be a decent guy. Other people say, hey, politics. We'll elect this dude or we'll, we'll or, or sometimes, uh, usually at our age, people say, well, I'm going to go to school and be a um, social worker, teacher, um, something related to helping people. You know, we'll go out and we'll change people's lives. You know, like I went to school to be a teacher. So I'd say, you know, yeah, you know, I go to school to be a teacher. And man, some of those kids, I, I really feel for them. Um, when I was uh, teaching summer school for the sixth grade, I had a sixth grader, like this high. He got, he got expelled from summer school for a smoking weed. In sixth grade, right? It's, it's in Houston, by the way. Um, and I was just like, you know, what do you do about that? All right, so number one, right? The world's a messed up place. Number two, hey. We need a solution, right? All right and then this is, this is where you, you kind of bring it to their minds, right? Present the idea that Jesus is a solution. Nowadays, most people are like, when it comes to Jesus, they're like, man, he's a nice guy, right? It's all people really think about when it comes to Jesus. You need to present Jesus as a solution, okay? And it's not about convincing. It's more about inception. <laughs> Okay? You are not trying to beat people down and say, you have to believe in Jesus. Because that's not your job. That's God's job. All your job is is to say, have you ever thought about Jesus? 
And you put that idea in their minds. And then the Spirit of God will, will, will make it their idea. And then that little idea will grow into this big thing that will change their life completely. That, that's why the Bible has all these things about seeds. So in case you're wondering, God thought of inception first. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, and, all right. So when you want to talk to someone, you say, all right, you know what? I'll tell you. Personally, I'm a reasonable person. I'm a regular guy. But for me, and then this is where I would be in your personal life. Because when you talk about a solution, you don't want to say, I think this guy's a solution. You can say, hey, I don't know if, if there are other solutions out in the world. You know? I mean, let's be honest. We're Christians. You know? we, we accept the fact that we don't know everything. But I'll tell you that for me, Jesus has changed my life. You know, I, I never thought um, I would be in Houston. And I, I, I remember, for me, like, the reason I came to Houston was because I thought God was calling me here. And I was like, man, Texas, like, they're all white. They wear cowboy boots. They have, you know, it's like, big, everything's bigger, you know. I'm like, I mean, they're probably going to shoot me because I'm Asian. And I came to Houston, and I'm like, man, they, I guess they can't shoot the entire city or something. You know. Oh, it was, it was weird, right? But it's things like that. You tell them, you tell those stories about how God has affected your life, how God has changed you, how, how your life is different because of Jesus. And, and in the Bible, um, as Christians, we're called to be two things. Witnesses, right? That's, that's really the word they use, witnesses, right? And a witness doesn't convince the jury of anything. You know, you're sitting in a courtroom, there's a judge, there's a case on. A witness does not stand there and say, hey, you have to believe me. A witness just says, hey, I was there, this is what happened. So when you talk about Jesus, you say, you know what? I think Jesus is a solution. Okay, now, a couple objections. First of all, people might say, well, he was born a thousand years ago. How do I know he's real? All right. There's a lot of different things, but I'll get into like two or three of them, okay? So number one, a lot of people say, okay, I'm thinking about how to approach this. Okay. So a lot of people will say that when it comes to Jesus, how can I believe Jesus? He's, just, he's a guy in a book a thousand years ago. How, how do I know he's real? All right, and then I would say, well, how do, you, how do you believe anything you see on TV? All right, what would you say to that? If, if I asked you, why do you believe anything is real on TV, what would you say? Because I watch it a lot. Because you watch, because you've seen it, right? But, all right, let me follow up with that. Just because you've seen it, how do you know it's real? Because I watch it a lot. <laughs> but how do, you know it's, how do you know it's not an illusion? How, come, how, how do you know somebody just didn't make it up? How can you, like, I've seen movies, they look real. I'm, no, seriously, what, what, would, what would you say? What's your natural reaction to that, right? You've been on TV? You haven't been on TV. Oh, yeah, I was on TV. My bad. Okay, right. But then you say this, okay? The truth is, the reason you believe that TV is real is because somebody told you that it's real. You're trusting them. You have faith that the person who plugs in your cable isn't just sending you some fakeness, you know? You're believing that the news camera guys actually go there and videotape those things. And in the same way, when it comes to Jesus in the Bible, we believe that the guys who wrote the book were telling the truth. See, a lot of people think that, oh, I can trust science. But truth is, you know what science is? It's some guy who says, yeah, I figured this out. Trust me, I have a PhD. Right? I mean, that's, we believe Einstein because everybody, I mean, why do, you, why do people think Einstein is smart? <laughs> okay, maybe. No, but seriously, why do people think Einstein is smart? He's a genius. How do you know he's a genius? Because he said he was. Yeah, somebody told you, right? Had anyone here ever met Einstein? How do, how do you know Einstein didn't just come up with crazy things and just invent them? I'll tell you a secret. You don't. Seriously, Einstein, everything Einstein said could have been an illusion. Somebody else wrote and made up for him. The fact is, you take it on faith that the person who writes the history textbooks and that the person who in college told you about Einstein and your physics professor was telling the truth. Same thing with Jesus. We believe the Bible because we believe that those people were telling the truth. Okay. Now, sometimes people will say, well, we're smarter now. And then I'd say, you know, because like some people are like, well, that's a thousand years ago. How can we believe something that's so old and we're newer today? And I'd be like, well... Would you believe somebody who was there, or would you believe someone who was born 2,000 years later? I mean, think about it, right? You have a question about World War II. You're going to talk to your grandfather who was there, 
Are you going to talk to some PhD who's 22 and just got out of college? 